Hey everybody, it's Comp Help. Thank you for watching this video, which is part six of my 3D Studio Max series for beginners. Hopefully, you've been practicing everything I'm showing you, and hopefully you're getting better. And now, you know, things don't look so foreign. You now know viewports, you know how to navigate around, you know how to move things, you know how to scale things, rotate things, and... Wow, you're learning a lot, I'm not gonna lie. So, there you go. Like I said, everything doesn't look so foreign. All right, today we're going to dive into something called shapes. What, Jerry? I already know what shapes are. They are like objects. Actually, no, they're not. They're actually like line things called splines. So let's go ahead and reset this from our last uh, video here. No, yes, great. I'm doing this every time I open up, uh, you know, every time the new video starts, I'm showing you that I'm resetting. Just so you can probably get into the habit, I don't know, maybe so you can get in the habit of resetting. Uh, you know, and uh, you won't be so lost and trust me that reset can really help you out a lot if you just get totally lost or Project gets totally torn up. So anyways Let's go over to our shapes button here. We are in the create tab and we are going to go to shapes Now what is a shape Jerry a shape? Let's go ahead and do a circle here Boom, whoa, it doesn't look 3d. Why not because it's not 3d if we go ahead and you know orbit around here it's not 3D at all. This is a different way usually to model things. Um, yeah, so we have a line, which is, you know, you can start click, 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 and it's kind of like a fence fence way of uh, creating a, yes, close that, you know, a, a shape or a ge geometric shape or something. Uh, we have a rectangle, you know, we have the arc, which is pretty interesting the way it works. Let go and then you can arc it. You know, you really want to practice uh, splines, trust me, because they can sometimes be kind of just interesting the way they work. Okay, well, that looks really confusing now, so I'm just going to select and delete these and Z up so I can center myself. Um, so let me just go really simple how these work. I'm just going to make a circle, okay? And this is where sub-object mode really starts coming into effect which I won't go in until my next video, but all I want to do for this video is actually make it really short and just show you how to make these these splines, these shapes, into 3D objects. So we have our shape here, okay? And what we're gonna do is go over to the Modify panel, I'll actually right click to get off of my command, go to the Modify panel and go to Extrude. Boom, Extrude. All right, Jerry, it doesn't look very different. What's what's going on? See the amount over here in your parameters? Boom, bring that up. There you go. You've now made that that shape, that spline, and you've made it, and you've extruded it to make it a 3D object. Look at that, it's pretty insane, right? And that's all I really wanted to show you in this video. What I want you to do is just get down the idea that that's how these work. These are not 3D shapes when you start out. So if I delete this, uh, this modify thing there, right? You'll see that they're just flat. I mean, you're not gonna get much out of them unless you know how to use them. Uh, and trust me, shapes are extremely useful, especially when you're modeling something that is not as easy to model from uh, a, you know, a sphere or something. You know, there's a big advantage to using shapes and splines and such. So just know that. So, thank you for watching this four minute video which showed you really little about splines. Uh, in the next video, we'll go over more in depth of how you can actually control these things. Remember, all links will be in the description. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Uh, yeah, so click part seven if you're cool. <laughs> thank you for watching.